The printer beside me is the very popular Prusa i3 Mark III S. You may recognize it because it's one of the most best-selling 3D printers in the world. Well, this isn't an original Prusa i3 Mark III S. It's a clone that I bought for five hundred ninety dollars. So why the price gap? Well, you're watching for new for people. My name is Joe. And this is my review of a clone Prusa i3 Mark III S. Well, let's get started. This printer is essentially the same as a normal Prusa i3 Mark III S. Sure, the X carriage is different and there's no Prusa logo, but that's about it. Well, except for the fans and the motors, which I'll get into later. And the PSU is extremely loud. But I think that's fixable. Basically, it has a spring steel bill plate that flexes, so when you flex it and it's cooled down enough, the prints pop off. Honestly, using this, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, the satisfaction from watching your print start from nothing to finishing and then just popping it off. Amazing. That gives it, I give it a 10 out of 10 for that. It doesn't even use installs. Instead, it uses stall detection, which I haven't had on a single 3D printer before. It has an inductive sensor, so it does automatic bed leveling. And it does that very reliably, which is, to be fair, expected. But I have had two printers that I've upgraded or already had automatic bed leveling and they just never work. And this one basically worked flawlessly after I assembled it. And the self has a bit gimmicky because I didn't cable manage it correctly. And that was my fault. So sorry, crucial printer. The belt tension was a bit off, but I'll get on that later. That was mostly because the manual didn't say screw in these two screws. And this is a revised x-axis, so I wasn't able to find information on it, at least in a manual form on the Prusa website, because this isn't their official design. In fact, here is the official Prusa design of the x-axis, and this is the clone's design. This is just a bit beefier, and I think it's called the Caribou Bear x-axis. It basically takes any filament I throw at it. This is currently loaded with PPU, which is a flexible filament. Specifically Polyflex. And I've even thrown PLA at it. This is Eson PLA Plus. I've had some problems with stringing on this printer, but I think I've fixed it with switching slicers and tuning the temperatures a bit. The print quality on this machine is pretty good. I mean, considering it's only $590, and other printers in that price range are just say iffy. You can either get this or something like a Fistec clone which is 300 or $400. I don't have that, but I've seen someone review it. And honestly, that's a good print as well. But I picked this because this was made by one dude in his own apartment who's really passionate about 3D printing. And he's selling it to us at a reduced price, which is great. And also, I just happen to need a printer. So this just works. I assembled it and well, not really. I told you about the self-test, and I'll get into that right now. Basically, this cable, the pinned-up cable, which you'll see in the close-up right here, it got jammed around here, the PSU cover. So it's only supposed to touch this black cable management piece, and instead of that, it touched two more cables, which caused the self-test to think that the axis length was wrong. Same with this Y-axis because I didn't cable manage the thermistor or the heated bed cable, which honestly I should probably do. And this print popped off because I didn't clean the bed properly. Even though this machine is really smart in terms of safety features, like it has enough features to keep itself and yourself from catching on fire, which is good. And also it has automatic filament loading and unloading. So that's a big bonus because I don't want to go into some settings menu and pressing a lot of buttons. And for a beginner, that's very useful. In fact, this is TPU and it automatically loaded, no problem. 
Although there was no setting for preheat temperatures for something like PPU, PTG, PLA, ASA, and ABS, and that's it. For the bed, it's quite interesting. 25 by 21 centimeter bed. It's a PCB heated bed. It's the Mark 52. Same thing you'll find in any other Prusa i3 Mark III. And it has a bunch of magnets embedded in it, so it can keep this large steel flex sheet on there. Talking about this steel build plate, this is actually textured. So one side is textured, one side is smooth. I normally print on the smooth side because I haven't gotten any good prints out of the texture side yet. But stay tuned, I'll print on that texture side one day. I've realized that slicers can have a huge difference on your print quality, especially stringing. In fact, here's a video about stringing and uh, the Inter 3 by Maker's Muse. He stated that Prusa Slicer, which he was using for his Ender 3, didn't do a really good job of stringing. But when he switched to Cura and he did some testing, it eventually came out with a near perfect stringing test. So he, he offered an apology to Creality and everyone else. So I did the same. I realized that my stringing problem was, well, it's a big problem at this point. Because just look at it. This is not acceptable for a five or nine dollar printer or any Prusa for that matter. There's blobs and zits all over it, and strings, fine string. And this is just the start of it. This is a string test I printed with Prusa Slicer. All right, that's the default settings, and this is the default settings with slight temperature change in Cura. Perfect, VS, basically not acceptable. I did a lot of tuning with these string tests, which take 15 minutes to print each. You should actually print one to check if your printer strings or not. And these are PETG calibration cubes. Their print quality is pretty good if I'm honest. I've never had a printer that prints this well, this easily. I mean, my Ender 3 needs this bed leveling essentially every single time you finish a print. That's because I keep using scrapers. But with this, I just flex the build sheet, put it back on, does automatic bed leveling, checks everything, and prints. I basically can leave it overnight for an extended period of time without thinking about, oh, is my print going to fail? Oh, is it going to turn into a blob of plastic instead of, let's just say, a RC car? Instead of that, I know that my print is going to succeed. It's going to work. It's not going to fall off the bed. And I've checked everything. So I'm happy. But on something like my CR10, I have to worry about, oh, is, is the print going to fail? Is, is there going to be a power cutout? Or is there going to be something that happens to the printer when I'm gone? And since the CR10 is a relatively large machine, a lot of things can happen very quickly. This machine, however, it's not particularly large. In fact, it only has a build volume of 25 by 25 by 21 centimeters. So, not the biggest printer I've ever had, but not the smallest either. 90% of my prints sit in this build space. And the other 10%, I don't really need in the first place. In fact, I can build them out of wood much more easily than printing. The hot end is not a genuine E3D. It is a custom machine won by the seller. And I appreciate that. Quite nice. I've had a few problems with assembling this printer. For example, this little extruder piece right here, I screwed in from the wrong side and it completely destroyed the part. But luckily the seller already provided a, the same part, which I think he accidentally printed twice of them, in a other bag, so I was able to do it again. Thankfully, nothing else broke. This board is the NZ Ramble, same board that Prusa's original printers used. And it has the same firmware, same everything. Same drivers, same everything, and it's really silent. And that's another good point, because this printer is silent. Like, really silent. I can stand beside it and not hear it. That's how silent it is. Although the PSU does kind of get hot and the fan blows on and comes on, and it kind of just ruins the entire silent experience. But when I'm sitting right next to it, I feel like my print has just failed and something has happened to my printer. 
but when I turn around, it's still printing and at relatively fast speeds. This printer it uses these smooth rods and linear bearings, which does work. And I think they've designed it really well. I've had problems with resonance on the LCD screen, which created really bad sounds during Z movements. And it gets annoying. But I fix it by just either tightening the screws on the LCD cover, or just completely disassembling it and just putting the LCD cover away from the printer's frame, at least. Speaking of the printer's frame, this is just CNC machine. Same thing Prusa does, same texture, same color. Same everything except this part does not have the Prusa logo, because it's not an original Prusa machine. Instead it has this QR code that leads to their website, which go check them out. They do some cool things, like they even sell filament, and they do sell the Prusa Mini. They have a Prusa Mini clone. The only printer that I can compare this to is my Dream Maker which is a over $1,000 Delta machine that does have automatic bed leveling, but it doesn't work anymore because it broke itself. After a few prints that were flawless on that machine, it broke. And sadly, I've never been able to print with it again. So that's a win for Prusa. And comparing this to my Ender 3, which is $150, it still does beat it in some areas. Like the Ender 3 does have bulging over these corners, but this Prusa does it perfectly fine. No bulging. Then their 3 is $150 and this is $590. So why would you buy this machine over, let's just say, an original Prusa or a Ender 3 or Ender 5 even, or an any other Delta machine or any other 3D printer in this price range at least? Well, this is essentially just a Prusa, and Prusas are known for their reliability, ease of use, and just leave it there and it will do its thing. I put files in there, put the settings in, heated the nozzle up, loaded filament, printed a Benchy. This is that Benchy. It's a PTG Benchy. Doesn't look very good because it doesn't have enough print cooling. This is a PLA Benchy that popped off, sadly. But that's only because I didn't use alcohol, which is this stuff, 75% ethanol, to clean this bed. And that's actually very important for printer beds. But first things first, the printer. Honestly, I think it's worth it. It's definitely worth the $590, and I'll probably even pay $750. But since that's a bit out of my price range, I picked this instead. And I think it was a good choice. The customer service is extremely nice, and we responded near midnight, which is definitely more than I had expected for something like this, which is essentially just a clone version of another product. And the seller was extremely nice, he even offered some tips. And apparently he does offer free upgrades, if you do need them. In contrast to my Ender 3, which the fan broke, I had to argue with support for a few minutes, and they finally sent a fan. And it took a week to arrive, but it did arrive without the connector. So I have to recrimp all the connectors and rewire everything, which is honestly not a good experience for me. And I still haven't done that yet. So that wraps it up. Thank you for watching and remember to leave a like, go subscribe, and go comment because this is my first video.